morning gang it's Jay and I'm coming to you from one of the uh, one of the big tracks of woods that's in my area and uh, decided to do a full-on review of my patrol pack and my patrol setup um, my patrol setup is a combination of a few different things um, everybody has a different idea or different philosophy as far as what they use what they are set up for so on and so forth. Um, you know, I went through the last several evenings um, trying to find good patrol loadouts, and everything was kind of cheesy, I felt like. I don't know. Um, nothing seemed very realistic. It was in some dude's basement or living room or whatever. Um, so I decided to get outdoors um, in an area that I like to go to and lay it all out for you and the reasons why I do the things I do. Um, so that's all. So stay tuned. We're going to go through the pack, go through the, the pack itself, and go through the contents and why I choose certain things. So that's it. Stay tuned. Um, as always, thanks for watching, guys, and um, we'll get at it. Thanks. Hey gang, it's Jay, and uh, I'm here out in the woods on my hike, and I figured I would take a few moments to do a quick review of my patrol pack. is the Savota Yakari Small. Um, they make it in three different sizes. This happens to be the smallest size. It is rated at 20 liters um, with a maximum capacity of upwards of 40 liters, which really makes it a great um, small day pack up to a two to three day patrol pack, which was exactly what my my needs were and I had had difficulty in finding a suitable pack something that was that versatile But I really felt like I found it in this pack so quick layout of it real quick um, The entire pack is made out of thousand denier cordura How well you can see it um, all the way down the front are you have rows of Molly on the front as well as both sides, one side, the other side. Something that I did with my pack that I was, um, I really wanted was the ability to be able to add side pockets to it. I wanted to be able to customize it where if I needed additional space, the pack design would allow me to do it. So one of the great things I did when I was at, and I'm going to butcher it, but when I was when I was ordering this pack from the Veris or Leica um, website is looking for suitable side pockets. And so they carry a name brand, Miltech. I don't know if anyone's heard of it or not. Um, because it's a European company that makes almost like, I hate to say like the American version of Condor. Um, but all the reviews are really good on their accessories. So I added a Miltech size large general purpose pouch on one side, a Miltech small general purpose pouch on the other side and then I added a um, M4 shingle to it for carrying whether it's mags or I bought it specifically for a radio setup. Back panel of the pack. The pack comes it is not a padded back panel. It is just plain. No padding to it whatsoever. The shoulder straps also come plain. So the other thing I did was I added the um, the Sarma padded shoulder strap pads and they slide right onto, how well you can see it, they slide right onto the existing shoulder strap. So you can see 
there's the shoulder strap design there. Not very wide, it's about an inch and a half to two inches wide with Miley loops down the front, but then the pad actually slides right over top of it and then Velcro's in place with additional um, straps down the, so down the uh, front of it, which I really liked. And when wearing it, the pad ends right before it disappears under my armpit, so there's no chafing whatsoever with it, which works out really great. The last thing I did when I got it was I added, it doesn't come with a sternum strap, which really surprised me. You would think um, any small day pack that's designed to carry heavier loads would come with a sternum strap. So I added a sternum strap. It was just a couple of bucks from them. It has an elastic strap on it, so when you're breathing, it expands with your body. And then I had to do some customized buckles here where I just it's designed as a quick re as a um, slide through and it slides onto the shoulder strap so that worked out really good for me the other thing that I really like about the pack is number one a couple things actually built-in accessory straps on the bottom of the pack for carrying a bedroll a tarp I carry I use it for carrying the uh, plush palatka there um, works out really nice to keep it nice and rolled up on the bottom and out of the way. And then there's accessory stra accessory um, or molly straps on the top of it as well. So if you needed to carry something up top, you could do so as well just by adding accessory straps. Big Velcro panel on the front. Big enough for a name name tape. Um, obviously, I carry my, my patches on there. And then, of course, the infamous Savota logo there. So you know you have the real thing when you have that when you have that patch on there. But um great testimony to them. Simple flap opening top. Another thing was I wanted something that didn't require zippers uh, for opening and closing. It's my fear and through experiences when you have a small pack and you're overloading it, which obviously you have the ability to do here, you can tend to, the things that are going to fail are things like zippers. Um, I didn't want to worry about that. So I wanted something, there's so many of the patrol packs out there, assault packs, what have you, that um, with all the zippers on them, they're going to bust. They just are, and it's Murphy's Law. It's going to happen at the most inopportune time. If it, if it can happen, it will, and it's going to happen when you least expect it and you need the product to work the most. So I wanted to just eliminate that whatsoever. So the pack has no zippers as far as being able to get into um, the pack itself and uh, opening and closing it. There's none of that involved whatsoever. So that works out good. It's a kind of a, a um, pseudo roll top closure to it. I'll take that out of there real quick so you can see. So the pack is designed where when you close it up, it folds over on itself creating a nice waterproof seal. So even in the hardest of rains, water's not gonna get in there. The other thing that they do on the pack is it has this heavy duty waterproof coating. Don't know how well you can see it. You can probably see some of the reflection from the light. It is really heavy duty. It's not just a chintzy little coating. It's, um, it's, it's on there last. Uh, if you were really worried about waterproofness, you could go through and anywhere there's stitching, you could seam seal that obviously, but um, I wasn't gonna bother with that. So, on the inside as well. Little accessory pocket. This is the only zipper on the pack. It's an accessory pocket for keeping small things in it. So anything that you may need to reach, you know, cordage, chem lights, lights, um, you know, battery chargers, things like that. Anything you might need that's little to keep organized and keep it right in there. And even that's a heavy duty zipper, um, brass pole on it. Um, but it's not going to be stressed out so you don't have any worries there as far as what's going to happen with it. Another thing that the pack has, let's say you don't have the pack loaded all the way. They do. There are side compression straps to it that you could tighten it up that roll all the way around to the back side. Since I have accessory pockets on the outside of it, I just have them pulled just slightly loose so that I don't have any issues with the pack itself. Um, all nice heavy duty Fastex buckles. Um, I don't remember the specific name that they use, but it's, um, what is it? Nexus buckles, that's what it is. But they, um, they work really well. I haven't had any issues with them yet. And then up top, simple grab handle um, for 
picking up the pack now. I did a paracord weave on it just to give it a little bit a little bit of a better purchase, a little bit more thickness to it for grabbing onto it. That was just something that I wanted to do there. That was all. Now, as far as why I wanted to set the pack up the way that I did. Um, my envisioned use was as a patrol pack. I know pa patrol packs get, uh, I think, probably um, the term gets overused a bit. Um, I'm calling it a patrol pack because I'm using it for multiple purposes. I'm using it whether it's um, patrolling several of the properties that, that, we, that we use or... Um, you know, setting up an observation area where you may be in the same, you may have to hike in for um, a few hours, set up an observation point, um, set up to go through the night and then pack out, you know, before first light. Um, works out really well for that. Um, somebody who maybe you're going on a, on a hunt way that requires you to hike in several miles, um, patrol pack works out good for that purpose uh, to me a patrol pack is something that you're carrying anywhere from one to three days worth of rations you're carrying water you're carrying a basic shelter setup a basic sleep system um, now obviously those are going to vary from the um, the time of the year and where you live at but you're going to have your basic shelter kit um, your basic sleep kit you're taking with you um, couple changes of socks, change of underwear, a warm layer to put on your foul weather gear, pair of gloves, and then you have your um, mission oriented gear. Uh, you may have with you a lightweight stove, you may have with you um, radio equipment, you might have um, defensive measures whether it be perimeter alarms, um, ammunition, firearms, things like that. Um, first aid gear is another big one. Um, you know, how much first aid gear do you need? Um, what is your what is your training or um, background in it or education in it? So, you know, obviously you're going to carry based upon what your level of, of training is for that. And then um, you're going to have your map and compass basics, uh, essentially your 10 essentials. Um, is what you're going to be using for it. So you may have concealment um, as far as camouflage. Uh, here you can see I have a big carried right in the top of the pack. A, uh, I think it's a six foot by eight foot section of camouflage netting. That's great for building hides, uh, observation platforms, anything where you, um, you want to blend into your surroundings as much as possible. Uh, so real quick on mine. Um, the way that I have my pack set up, I'm just going to start uh, from the outside and we'll work our way in. So on one side, I had keep a pair of gloves hanging out. You never know when you're in a brush area where you need uh, extra protection for your hands there. Or it starts to get a little cold, you put your gloves on medium or the size large general purpose pouch on mine so here open it up for you in fact let me i like these pouches they have a drawstring closure similar to like on your british bergens which is what my larger pack is um draw cord closure gives you more space so i just carry a gi one liter canteen canteen cup Pretty basic, pretty simple. Um, something you may, I, I use this to refill my water bladder. I don't use that to drink out of, or I use that for water for whether it's tea or coffee or for cooking with. So that's in there. Flip side, small general purpose pouch. So this, I've gone back and forth with how I set this up. The way that I have it set up today, keep an emergency bivy in there and I keep a coffee cup. If I can get it out, keep a coffee cup in there um, for drinks. It just made the most sense for the amount of space that I had um, for today. Now, it, you can also, this will fit three AR mags in it. 
Um, so if you're on a um, on an outing that requires spare ammo, obviously you have a lot of room for it there. The other thing that I did was I have an ammo pouch here and then a pistol mag pouch. And what I did was I set up a, um, a patrol pack radio kit for it. So I have your general Baofeng radio with the extended battery on it slides inside of there really nice and I have full access to it while I'm walking. I can pull it out and check it, change frequencies, put it right back, but it stores right behind me. I have my cable for my shoulder mic and then I have the separate a routing cable for an antenna. These antennas are fantastic. It keeps it, um, keeps it higher up in the air that way you're constantly able to monitor frequencies. It does give you a bit of higher gain. So even in a deep river valley, um, uh, you still can reach out over and uh, over that uh, crest of the hill and be able to get further communications. I've been able to just, uh, usually we use mirrors frequencies. Um, even in wooded hilly terrain, we've been able to get a couple miles out of it at just low wattage which on the biofangs is one watt um it's worked out perfect uh, i have no complaints whatsoever now if i'm in a base camp i have a separate system that i'll that i set up um i'll go th i'll go through that at another time um but that antenna system works out really well you can fold it to keep it out of the way and you could also unscrew it from the routing cable and attach it right to your radio directly if you were going to be um constantly using it in your hand or up front with you but as a pack itself on the go communications not having to stop that setup works really really great on the front i took one of those high speed mag pouches i actually cut the bottom out of it so that i can slide an axe down through there or a tomahawk or a hatchet works out great for um carrying that externally on the pack so that's the outside of the pack. Um, oh, forgot to mention, you have a spot for routing your um, drinking hose. So it comes out of the pack, it's all in neoprene lines, so it really gives you a good weather seal there too. Now let's go ahead and open up the pack and look at the contents. So as we were saying before there, guys, um, everything that I would have laid out with the pack as far as the contents go, number one, I have my uh, camo my camo netting for, um, for stealth and concealment, so put that in there. We talked about gloves. Get into the top, carry a shemag, obviously. You could as a, use it as a face wrap, a blanket, um, use it to help with tying a compression bandage, use it as a do-rag, uh, any number, use it as a cooling towel, any number of things. So I always, always have one of those with me. One day's worth of rations here. Um, bumped it up to, it's, I'm almost at 2,500 calories in here. So I have a thing of soup, I have a peanut butter breakfast bar, bunch of granola bars, bunch of Slim Jims, some, some small um, sesame seed granola bars. These are great, high in, uh, high in calories, high in fats and proteins, so those work out really great. Um, I have a whole bunch of instant coffee in here. Coffee is what makes me go, so I like coffee. Um, but I got enough in there for a day's worth of rations. Next, I have perimeter alarms. Um, I carry two of these with me. They're designed, you can set these up um, on any kind of, uh, once you have a camp set up or an observation post, uh, these are great, an idea how these work. There's an on-off switch, 120 decibels, turn it on, pull. That's how loud they are, they're, they're loud. Um, definitely will wake you up if um, in the middle of the night or um, you know to be able to uh, back up on your, you know, if you have a blind side in your observation post or on a, your spot for having to remain overnight, that works out great. Um, all tied together with fishing line really makes a, a, an ideal little 
uh, perimeter alarm set up. Great for if you're, these are great for your if you're in bear country as well. Um, I have some friends who recently did a backpacking trip in Glacier National Park and they took some of those with them, which was great. Optics, I have a night vision monocular as well as a standard handheld monocular. So whether it's daytime observations or nighttime observations, I have both my both of those covered there. Digging further into my pack, we've got here uh, my water filter. I carry a Sawyer Mini with the bag for it. Uh, having to have clean water is a must and the Mini is proven time and time again for how small and lightweight it is. Boy, does it work really well. Carry a first aid kit along with the tourniquets. Um, the way my first aid kit is set up here, so I carry two first aid kits. This is my in-depth kit here where I have um, any kind of traumatic injury. I can take care of it for a single person with this. I also carry on my purse, and, and you'll notice this as we go through with, um, with pat a patrol setup. A lot of it is also on your body or in a chest pack or a chest rig. Um, you know, my mon the monocular is a great example. I keep it in a in a chest rig, uh, so easy access. I don't have to stop to pull it out, so that works out really good there. So I can keep my large first aid kit here with the tourniquet, and then in my left thigh pocket, I keep a boo-boo kit in there as well. Um, it has your standard band-aids, uh, allergy medicine, ibuprofen, tape, um, a set of chest seals in there. Um, things like that, things that you just might need during the day, um, as well as a couple trauma items in there to help. So once again, carry that in my pocket there. So it's easy access for me, more like I said, I call it a boo-boo kit, um, versus the full IFEC that I carry in my pack. Now here I have my stove set up and my fire kit. Um, being able to make fire in the woods is a must-have uh, skill, not just skill, but equipment-wise. So I carry, I have a, um, a big lighter, um, safety matches, uh, they're the long burn ones. I keep several small pieces of fat wood. I keep a, um, a pill bottle with oil-soaked uh, cotton balls, so I mean they, they take a spark ASAP and off you go keep some wet tinder bundles in there, some pieces of rubber inner tube. It's amazing, a piece of um, rubber inner tube cut into a square, light it with a light the corner of it with a lighter will stay lit for five minutes. Um, doesn't smell good, but stay lit for several minutes. So I keep all that in a waterproof box. And to go along with that, in my patrol bag, I keep a basic stove set up. So here I'm doing just one of your knockoff Esbit stoves with your with your square um, solid fuel tablets in it. Um, I've had great luck with this little stove. It works well with the canteen cup that's on my um, water bottle that I showed you there just a little bit ago. So that combined makes a great little cook setup. It's not very smoky. It doesn't smell very much. So it really works out ideal for that type of a use. I, I just keep those couple things in a waterproof stuff sack and keep that rolled up inside my pack. You notice so far there's a, there's a theme here. Simplicity, things that can do more than one thing, and um, small and light. Uh, keeping it simple, it, it's huge. Um, we were going with the whole fire setup uh, there as well. You'll notice, once again, with a patrol pack set up, you know, on my body, I have a carbon steel, small fixed bladed knife, and then I also have a ferro rod. So for being able to have, you know, on the go, um, everything is right there on my person. I'm not having to dig for that. Um, works out really well. Once again, I keep it in a one of those high speed, the, um, Blue Force mag pouches uh, works well for holding on to that type of gear. As we dig further in, 
this is my radio box. So here I keep whatever it is. I keep a spare antenna for my radio. I keep a spare battery. I'm also set up for, I have a J-pole antenna that rolls up. So here. J-pole antenna along with paracord and a carabiner for um, being able to rig it up in a tree. My J-pole antenna is designed to reach up to uh, 12 feet, which gives me a lot of extra distance, a lot of extra carry. It takes just a few minutes to deploy. It increases my range, increases my strength, and it works great as a base camp setup. So if you're in an observation post, whatever kind of a hide you're in or shelter, that is, it is super simple to be able to throw up in a tree um, and have extended communications. Uh, so that on a handheld, it works out great for using mirrors frequencies if you're in a patrol situation where you're communicating amongst um, teammates. Uh, but it's another if you're having to communicate to a base camp where you might be further out. You need to be able to reach further. So that J-pole antenna makes a huge difference. can give you a lot of extra carry, maybe five or six miles, maybe further. Especially if you're hooked up to repeaters and you're using um, normal ham frequencies. That can, that can make a huge difference there. Also, you can use, um, I've been experimenting with this, digital modes. Um, uh, Fidelgy. I how I pronounce it at least. Um, it's a digital code that you can use. You can listen to ham radio operators digitally all around the world. Um, you can do it via a shortwave radio. So I carry a C-Crane shortwave radio, the Skywave SSB. Um, actually got it as a gift from, from someone. And this here, I have been able to just this with an antenna put up anywhere from 20 to 30 feet tied into a tablet. I've been able to listen to people um, from here in Ohio, listen to folks up in New England, up in uh, the upper Great Lakes, Minnesota, Wisconsin, down in Texas, and off to the um, Pacific coastline, Washington. Um, it is amazing, the technology, and to be able to have that communications uh, ability is huge. Um, I also carry in here, I have my um, input cord for doing that and I have a couple of um, tiger tails for the bale thing when using it as a handheld to help with um, to help with picking things up and uh, get a clearer signal there so this works all all that I keep in once again a waterproof box so that anytime I need to use it it's there. It's in my kit. It's part of my setup. I can't once I can't stress it enough, guys. Communications in the field. Um, you got nothing unless you can communicate to the outside world. So that works out. That's huge. It works out well. As we're digging deeper, we're almost done. Keep a rain jacket. Uh, lightweight, simple. It also adds. Um, we're moving into the type of year where it adds a little bit of warmth. And um, in here, I keep. This is my spare clothing. I keep a spare pair of underwear, a couple pairs of socks. Um, moving into this time of year, I got long underwear top, long underwear bottoms, and um, a pair of thin gloves and a stocking cap for sleeping at night. So that works out really well. And then to finish it all off, I keep this time of year, keep a whoopee in the bottom of it. Um, temperatures here at night are starting to get into the upper 40s, low 50s. So I have this in there. Now as we move into a little bit deeper in the fall, I'll pull this out and I'll put a GI Patrol bag in there. So that'll work out really good. So that's that. Um, inside, I carry a water bladder. And I also keep in here, I don't know how well you can see it, or if I'm going to be able to pull it out. Well, here, we're just, we're just going to pull it out. I keep a folded up pad. This is underlayment from a flooring project. It's reflective on one side, solid on the other. It's designed as a protective barrier against water and adds a little bit of padding. But this can be used as a sleep pad or a sit pad for inside a shelter. Um, 
I've used this a few times. It actually ain't that bad. It's just enough to keep you up off the ground, and it adds as a and it doubles as a padded back panel for my pack. So all that in there. You notice the idea. Everything is working with each other to create a system here. There is a hanger inside for your water bladder, which works out really well. Just go through the top of the bladder, tighten it down, double the strap back, and we're rocking and rolling in that sleeve. So you can see here in the pack, there is a lot of space there. Um, it's a square, it's kind of almost a rectangular cut, so it has, um, has corners to it instead of just a tube. It's more squared off. It allows for easier carrying of things. Um, last but not least here on the bottom of my pack, so here I've got my plush palatka. It can be used as a as a poncho. Um, it can be used as a ground cover. It can be used as a makeshift um, bivy sack for uh, whether you have a wooby in there. The wooby actually ties right inside of it through the grommets. So you can have yourself kind of a uh, makeshift ranger taco, if you will, um, instead of throwing a wooby inside a um, the USGI uh, bivy sack. Um, you do it inside of here, which works out great. The other thing, you can use this as a shelter. It's six feet by six feet. Um, works out great as a makeshift shelter. So I keep in here rolled up a length of paracord for a ridgeline kit, and then I keep four tent stakes um, with a uh, bank line for prussics on it. And uh, it works out really great for making a, uh, a quick makeshift shelter. Um, you can set it up as a canopy. You can set it up for a uh, for a observation post. Um, you can set it up as a real quick low to the ground A-frame. Um, multiple uses to it, so it works out really good there. But I keep all of that rolled up inside, and it works out great. And then last. Go through my pocket that I keep everything. I keep a bug head net in there for sleeping at night or for during the day. It also helps break up the profile of your face. I keep some more paracord in there. Um, once again, a ridgeline kit and a spare piece. You never know what you need paracord for. I have spare batteries for my flashlight and my headlamp and my radio. A couple chem lights. And then I have my battery charging set up. I have a solar charger. This will charge my phone four times. I also have the adapter for charging the extended battery on the Baofeng radio. You can charge it right off of this. Um, so everything I need is in there. So it keeps me on the go. I know that I can get three days use of out of this for battery life, no matter where I'm at or what the conditions are. I can maintain my communications equipment and my lighting for a minimum of three days. So everything just pops right back into there. Head net, all of it. Zips right up, we're good to go. Um, so that's the patrol pack there. The rest of my patrol pack setup, this particular here, I have multiple chest rigs that I wear. Um, this happens to be the one I brought out today. Uh, simple setup, cross, um, cross back setup, you know, just a traditional X carry harness to it. Here, I'll scoot up here so you can see. So on the front, I have a pistol mag pouch. You can use it for carrying a, um, a pistol mag. You can use it for carrying a light, multi-tool, whatever it may be. The other side, AR mag pouch that I use just to carry a small bushcraft knife and a ferro rod. On the inside here, so here I carry compass, carry a whistle on a lanyard, carry my headlamp um, to go along with the observation post um, idea or if you're collecting intelligence, um, documenting things, carry a small camera with me. That camera I can actually, it's the, it can work on a Wi-Fi network so I can actually download through, via Wi-Fi onto my phone with this and I can transmit photos if I need to, um, which works out really well. Um, or video or whatever, if I'm not using my, obviously on a phone, it, it takes up a lot of um, battery life running video, doing things like that, but I know that I can uh, use this 
if I need to as far as uh, battery goes, just in case. And then um, carry small American flag, multi-tool, and then just a couple other spare bits. I have a um, earbud for my radio. I have an extra ferro rod. I have iodine tablets for purifying water. Some zip ties in there. I carry some some wire for making snares. And I have a small survival saw in there that can also be used to rig up a snare. So that's it, gang. Um, thanks for following along. And I haven't done an in-depth video like that before, so I've been wanting to do it. Just haven't had the time. But there we go. So thanks for following along. Um, you guys keep doing what you're doing. And uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pack this up and hit the trail again some more. So thanks for watching. I appreciate all your support. And uh, keep getting out there and getting at it. Thanks, guys. Bye.